Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Let me show you what I'm up to today. I did a, I'm going to call it a theoretical rendering of the whole wire harness, key switch, and so forth for this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this thing up quickly and I'm going to show you that like no gas in it, so it's going to be real quickly. Um, I'm going to show, then I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what I did is, but you could see there's a battery there. You could see a light bulb and all. So here's the key switch, right? And it's one of those key switches that has t two positions, one for on and one for start. So it's off and obviously the engine isn't running. Everything is off. I click it once and you guys can see that light bulb is lit. Okay, um, and then I hit the start. And you guys can see it runs, and then that easy to turn it off. Okay, and that's really where you want to be with your stuff, right? There's nothing worse than every time you want to start it, you got to take panels off and tweak this and kick that. And if you're building a project, that's the difference between, I don't want to use the word mature. Let's use the word professional build and junk, right? With a professional build, somebody walks up to whatever they built and it works. In the case of, in this case, a golf cart turning it into a UT, um, an utility terrain vehicle, UTV, um, you want to be able to just walk up to it and hit the key and ride it. And it's even better yet if you could walk up to it and all the controls work just as they should, whether it's the um, shifter, gas pedal, brake, steering, choke, reverse on and on and on so that any character you can when they say where's reverse oh you move the lever backwards and you pull this right and you even set it up with the extra stuff perhaps dashboard lights over here that show that look you're in reverse so you got to get it out of reverse and then you see the neutral light on and then one click after neutral you're back in first right that's really where you want to get with this stuff so the wire harness right you can see it comes along and it comes through here and by the way for the life of me I can't find a single tie wrap I think the ninja's been through and uh, yesterday he put in an extra popsicle six with 36 on it and today he went through and stole every single one of my tie wraps so i gotta buy more tie wraps tomorrow but from a simple point of view the red wire going out to the key switch has a fuse in it and it goes to the 12 volts on my starting solenoid here and that goes to the 12 volts on the battery. Okay. Coming off the other side of the starting solenoid, it goes off to the starter. Right. This wire here. And the um, neutral for the battery. I deliberately bolted it right to the starter here. So that's the neutral, the ground. And I bolted it right up to where the starter bolts to the body. Normally, you don't have a fuse in series with the starter um, should should there be well yeah you probably need about a hundred amps worth of fuse this red wire is just grounding the starter relay which isn't hooked to anything yet this wire here it's orange with a white stripe this powers the starting solenoid and I have it going to the brown wire which when I turn the key all the way to start position it puts power to that the purple wire gets power when it's on the um, on position, which lights up the light bulb. And these two wires here, 
this is body ground this is um, the um, the off switch and I just hooked them up here into the uh, pit bike wire harness when it comes to the pit bike wire harness right comes with the CDI comes with this harness and the blue and white goes to the blue and yellow red and black go to red and black and green is always ground and you have two extra wires coming out of the engine um, in this cluster a pair of yellows that means there's a two-phase um, alternator in there um, these two wires would go to a regulator out of the regulator would be a, a black and red and red black so you know exactly where they go there's also two more wires that come out of the engine right and what happens with these is um, they provide ground to light bulbs one of these provides a ground to a um, neutral light bulb so you put positive to one side of the light bulb and then you hook ground of the light bulb to this so when you're in neutral one of these will light you know provide that and the other side is is for um, reverse I'm not I'd have to check these by shifting it to figure out which is which right now I don't know you could also um, typically tell wires that are load wires or wires that are neutral wires are typically not protected they're typically males the females right like you can see these are females well why is that because these two provide power from the stator right and if you pull the wires out of them you don't want hot wires touching anything and male wires right for more reasons than one right if if these were hot wires once you pull them out right as you touch they would be sparking so that's kind of another way if you're trying to figure out what your wire harness is up to um, the pit bike wire harness it comes in a bunch of little bags that obviously is the um, ignition coil this is the on and off switch right? you push that button in and you turn it off and it plugs right into the wire harness and this is the wire harness which has plugs for this and plugs for this and plugs for that and it also has those banana clips which are color coded as I described so you can just hook those right up and the nice thing about this wire harness is you can get them the entire thing everything for less than 20 bucks they come from um, where'd this one come from this one came from China which means it takes two, three, four weeks to get to you. Don't order an unexpected tomorrow. Pay the extra five to ten bucks, and typically you can get them out of California, and then they typically show up in a week. So, just suggestions. Um, just to give color coding, right? They have black going to stator um, on a 200S. In this case, it's black and red, black and yellow, runs the uh, ignition coil, and that's still the same. Blue and yellow, blue and white is, what, um, is what's coming from the pulse generator. Dark green, green, um, they're typically the ones that run the um, uh, ground. And black with a white stripe is typically, when you ground that, that's how you turn the bike off. So folks, I know for some people doing the electrical stuff is, is literally a bit scary to them. They just worry about it. Am I going to blow something up? Is something going to go wrong and all that? And also, they typically wire things up and they don't work. And then what the hell is wrong here? And on and on and on. Let me give you a hint. To increase your chances of success, do not buy just one of these why don't you want to why do you want to buy more than one of these because 
how many components could be bad here? You can have a problem with your ignition coil. You can have a problem with your wire harness. You can have a problem with your um, your CDI unit, and you can screw up your wiring. So there's a lot of places for mistakes. Well, let's assume you do all your wiring properly, and it still won't start. Now you're like punching yourself in the face and all kinds of unhappy. That's why when I do hook up one of these, the first thing I don't do is put the on and off switch in. I have another way of turning the motor on and off, such as choking it or getting electrocuted by pulling the spark plug wire off. It's supposedly good for the nervous system to jolt it once in a while. I don't like doing it because I don't like being juiced. But um, So typically I leave that thing out. But if you buy two of these, you now have a spare CDI spare wire harness and a spare ignition coil so it'll help you troubleshoot once you checked your wiring a whole bunch of times then if you have a spare set of everything it makes life a lot easier also um, typically I find that once I get something that works like this whole setup works really well with all the Honda stuff I play with um, I don't want to have to keep like take it off of that to put it on that Right. I'd rather have a completely separate unit, separate setup that I can walk over there. I don't even like swapping uh, parts to troubleshoot. So typically, I think I ordered um, three of these when I did actually order them. Yeah, I think it was only three. I don't think I ordered four. What do I have left to do on this thing? Well, I really do want to get it out for a romp. But i gotta, I got to tie this battery down because I just as soon not have it like mess with the chain I also got to do something with this wiring because I just as soon not have it blow that fuse or um, create me any other troubles uh, particularly with this I I what I need to do is get myself a bunch of um, wire ties and I'll, I'll probably do that tomorrow I have to run some errands tomorrow so I'll do that I gotta get all this stuff mounted up properly and tucked away and neat and clean, right? One, if you're not careful, you'd be amazed how things sag down, and the next thing you know is that hot terminal right there is right up against that ground, and this thing could sit smoldering, and you know, who wants to come out and find the garage on fire, right? That not only would make me cranky, but it would make my wife and insurance company really, really cranky. So guys, um, I hope you found this interesting. I think it's it's always pretty cool when you know you can walk up to something and uh, just hit the key. I can start that. Right. That's where one really wants to get their life to. Um, for those of you, maybe you're. Um, you might be just seeing this whole video for the first time or run, or seeing this cart for the first time so very quickly what it is is an easy go electric and there's the serial number on it which I think makes it a 1988 what I did is I pulled all the electronic junk out of there everything gone the rear end the motor the relays batteries the whole bit and I um kind of built this double frame which goes from the back this is the easy go frame this is my frame and you can see how it slides along the front and I actually extended it all the way up and bolted it to the frame on there I do not have any rear suspension I went with a typical uh, live axle just just um, no differential, just an axle. Pillow bearings, right? One, two, one there, one out there. Standard disc brakes. I went with as big a sprocket as I could get my hot little hands on. I think this is known as 520. Um, so I went with a nice big sprocket. You can see the axle is keyed, so I have a keyway here and a keyway for each wheel. I used um, just conduit pipe as spacers to make everything stay where it is. That way I'm just not relying on Allen keys clamped 
to um, Allen keys clamp to the keyway clamp to the axle. Um, this is a Honda TRX 200 SX engine, obviously a chain drive. What these are known for, or what the TRX 200 SX is known for, it's known for um, getting a lot of play. It's kind of narrow in the back here between the bearings, so you have a tendency to get a lot of play. They have a tendency to throw the chain and damage the case. It's really, really hard to get a TRX 200 SX with a decent case. Um, Right now, I just obviously have the chain on it. But if you look down here, I do have a couple of these guys. And I'm, what I'll do is every once in a while, I'll, in my mind, I'll, I'll start looking at this, trying to figure out how to put this on. But that won't be done. I'll just take it on a light romp um, when we go out for a ride. There's videos so you guys could see all this stuff. This is my shifter, right? You can see how it moves this lever, which moves that, which moves the gear shift that I have up and down. I still have the recoil starter on this thing, so I can actually pull start it as well as electric start it. Um, this goes to my gas pedal linkage. Right, you guys can see that moving. And I just left the uh, finger throttle there, right? And you can see as you step on the gas, it just moves that. So it's a hack job. But, um, and when we take this out, hopefully tomorrow, it is a hoot to ride. This thing is just a pisser to ride. Um, it's got enough power, and with these tires on it, these little tires, and there's not a lot of the tread there, it, it's just always spinning the tires, whatever. So, you know, you, you tromp down on the gas, the, the tail end breaks right loose. And, uh, I mean, she's fishtailing all over the place. All right, folks, I really want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep... Your feet down, keep your head up, and please, please get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.